In the African diaspora, we hear a lot about the Kushite Empire, also known as the 25th Dynasty of Egypt. Perhaps the most popular of those 25th Dynasty pharaohs were King Payanki and King Taharqa. But in between those great rulers reigned a little discussed king known as Shabaka. In African intellectual spaces, we often call the Kushite Empire the African Renaissance because of how the Kushite rulers literally restored Nile Valley culture. And one of the primary actors advancing this renaissance was King Shabaka. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Throughout this video, you'll be hearing me pronounce this African king's name as either Shabaku or Shabaka, as there are different spellings of his name throughout the sources. So please bear with me. To understand King Shabaka's reign, we must first understand the time he was living in. The Assyrians had recently conquered Samaria in 720 BC, and they were becoming a rather large threat to the Egyptian Delta region. One of the Egyptian rulers of the Delta, or the Northern region at that time, was Asurakan IV of Tanis. He was compelled to send diplomatic gifts to Sargon II of Assyria, whose army was stationed just 120 miles away. This possible Assyrian threat was alarming to King Shabaka, and he decided to move his capital and royal residence from Napata and Kush to Memphis in Egypt. Shabaka was trying to further Kushite rule in Egypt and consolidate Kushite hegemony. He gained control over the former domain of Sias in the Delta region, and he was able to restore border security in the Sinai. Shabaka was an intelligent conqueror because he knew that forceful control of Egypt could not last. There were too many cultural, political, and religious elements that would interfere with total Kushite domination as rebellions would be almost guaranteed. He avoided a bulk load of dissension and political fragmentation through a more diplomatic and religious process. The local dynasties of the Delta were not completely annihilated and simply acted under a centralized Kushite government. Shabaka's focus was seemingly elsewhere, as he dealt quickly and decisively with the Assyrian threat. For the time being, this threat was neutralized through Kushite diplomacy. For the time being, however, Shabaku's relationship with Assyria was friendly, thanks to the extradition in 712 BC of Ayamani of Ashdod. Ayamani revolted against Sargon II and sought to take refuge with Shabaku, but he was promptly delivered to the Assyrian ruler. Shabaka was a big part of the African Renaissance because he was one of its original contributors. An argument can be made that King Payanki was more involved in the conquering of Egypt, while Shabaka is the one who truly spearheaded the Renaissance. It's almost as if he wanted to do away with the Assyrian issue as quickly as possible, to do what he really wanted, the religious, political, and spiritual consolidation of Kushite rule. Consolidating his power, Shabaku found the resources which enabled him to resume temple building activity throughout Egypt, a royal duty that had been fatefully neglected during the troubled times of his Libyan predecessors. During the course of the 15 years of Shabaku's reign, Thebes was the scene of imposing temple restoration and building work mainly organized by newly appointed Kushite dignitaries such as Kelbiskin, mayor of Thebes and fourth prophet of Amun. According to Egyptologist Laszlo Toruk, the changing of Shabaka's capital from Napata to Memphis initiated the second great period of the intellectual integration of Kush and Egypt. One of the most important preserved monuments of the 25th dynasty archaism dates from Shabaku's reign. The Memphite theology, disguised as a copy of a worm-eaten papyrus from the earliest times of the Egyptian kingdom, presented a monumental discourse on the creation of the world and on Memphis as the primeval hill, the original place of the creation and place of origin of pharaonic kingship. 
It represents a concentrated effort at religious renewal, the restoration of the holiness of Egypt and her sacred places, and constitutes a part of an intellectual process which is also demonstrated by other monuments of the Kushite dynasty from Thebes and Nubia. This preserved document apparently discovered by Shabaka was a critical moment in the socio-cultural intellectualism of the Kushite empire in the progressive birthing process of the African Renaissance. This deteriorated papyrus possessed a very ancient African theology that was recorded on a black basalt slab known as the Shabaka Stone. The Shabaka Stone preserves the only surviving copy of an important Egyptian religious text, usually referred to as the Memphite Theology of Creation. In the earliest tradition surviving from Egypt, the creation of the world was ascribed to the god a tomb of Heliopolis. But the theology of Memphis sought to give a prior claim to Ptah, patron god of that city, by crediting him with the creation of the other gods and thereby indirectly with the creation of the world. On account of Shabaka's attempts to consolidate his rule, scholars aren't exactly sure as to whether or not the content of the Shabaka stone is genuine ancient history or an invention of Kushite propaganda. Despite the inconclusive nature, Shabaka's alleged contribution to a religious or spiritual discovery perhaps furthered his consolidation efforts and certainly contributed greatly in the discourse of the intellectual spaces during the African Renaissance. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.